Hola Todos! So today is a very special video for two reasons. The first being that this is the first proper video on my channel this year. And the second reason being that this is hopefully a good introduction to a new series of videos I want to do on my channel called Theory Review. Now Theory Review is where I take an old popular theory from a fandom, give my opinion on it, arbitrarily rank it using a star system and give a new spin on it. Think about what Channel Federator does, but with my own spin because I take the theories and see if I can put a new spin on it by either using my own unique perception towards the show's material and see seeing if there's any possible way it could work or by looking at it in the light of new material. With this video I'll be using the third technique to give it my own new twist. Let's see how it goes. And keep in mind that this is not something I will or want to do on my channel often. Just every now and then to get myself out of a rut. So today's theory review is on Pinky and the Brain. More specifically one of the two most popular fan theories for Pinky and the Brain, which boils down to one simple question. What if Pinky is the genius and Brain is insane? In my opinion, this is a solid theory. For brevity's sake, I try not to go into too much detail, but there are fans of Pinky and the Brain who not only ask this question, but have come to the conclusion that indeed, Pinky is the genius, and it's the brain who is indeed insane. To me, this theory is solid for none other reason than the fact that Pinky is consistently uh, having these moments of brilliant clarity, while the brain is, however academically smart, always fails to take over the world. Some they may even say that's it. That's the whole show. But according to my favorite version of this theory, we can go even further by asking, what if Pinky knows the brain is insane and it's his job to ensure that the brain doesn't hurt himself while engaging in his fantasies of power? In other words, what if Pinky is some kind of handler or counselor for brain? At this point, we are getting into the realm of speculation, and if you decide to drop the theory at this point, I do not blame you. As a matter of fact, a huge part of me kind of wants to drop it too, but you know what? Let's just keep going on because it's just fun. So, for being a theory that's just as fun as it is engaging, as it is ridiculous, as it is possibly possible, I give it four and a half out of five stars. That's just my rating for the theory as it stands with the original uh, shows. Now, Totos, we get into the... Okay, so it's not really even so much of a twist at this point, but it's a really, really bright new light that makes this theory even stronger. And it is an episode that I'm not even exaggerating. It made my jaw drop. In episode 9 of the reboot, Future Brain, there is a future version of Brain, of course. He found his way back to our present, aka his past, to warn his past selves for, from who we, for brevity's sake, will call brain of Pinky's betrayal. Future Brain calls Pinky a malevolent evildoer who betrayed him at every turn. While Brain shuns well himself at first, he is genuinely forced to question Pinky's loyalty after Pinky, indeed, runs his chance of gaining an Academy Award by putting his cheesecake recipe in the envelope. Now, there's some out there who believe, without a shred of doubt, that this confirms the classic aforementioned theory. However, 
I felt the episode was made to address the theory all the while keeping things just slightly open-ended. After all, had the theory been confirmed, I wouldn't really call it a theory anymore, but a fact of the show. By including the moment of Pinky choosing to blast Future Brain, which, come on, how could he not tell them apart? We get some room for individual interpretation by forcing active wa watchers to wonder if Pinky shot Future Brain to shut him up or to display his absolute loyalty to Brain. Or did he just so happen to make a really good guess that took everything back to the all but complete status quo? quo? Cause for that, I do not know, and I leave it to you, the person watching this video. If you choose to do so, to draw your own conclusions, so long as you keep in mind that you may be wrong, and that's okay, well, that's great. Cause that, my friends, is the fun of theorizing. Now, the thing that made my jaw drop was the fact that the writers chose to humor the audience and lead them on without making them feel like absolute fools. This episode was made specifically for fans of the show who were aware or supporters of the theory we're discussing today. There I say it's the right kind of fan service. However, they not once ever not once did I fight However, they not once did what I've come to expect to, from most shows that address the more hypervigilant side of the fandom these days, and that is mocking them. The easiest way for me to put this is that they did pull a Steve Moffat. They humored the fans and may or may not have told them they were wrong without mocking the fans were thinking and that right there is why I made this video which theory do I like best you may be asking personally I choose to believe that Pinky is not malicious but in fact the only true golden-hearted character out of all the large cast of characters deemed the Animaniacs I like to believe that he is a humanitarian well Human in the sense of conscious living things, who works in favor of the common good. And over time, he has formed a beautiful friendship with the brain by engaging in his fantasies, but stopping things before they go too far. In order to get away with this and keep brain from questioning his loyalty, he feigns, or perhaps relies on, some of his own stupidity. Because what if I told you I think they're both geniuses, and both insane? It's just that Pinky seems insane to Brain because he's more socially capable. And the Brain seems insane to Pinky because he is socially inept. And, yeah, wants to take over the world. We all may be wrong, and only the writers can know for sure, but hey, I don't make my videos for the money, the views, or even because I think my ideas are necessarily right. I make them because it's fun. And that's that.